They, they probably needed to do this. This is based on uh, ethnograph ethnographic examples that we have of people that have a different, similar subsistence strategy. But having meat available fueled this expensive and energy expensive, this uh, energy, energetically expensive brain. Um, and although it's only about 2% of your body mass, it's about 20% of your body's energy. So it better do bet more for you than not having that. You'd be better off not having to supply a brain with all of that energy if you could get by without it. So they must have been more successful with this brain that could problem solve and to control fire and to cook with it, uh, to stay warm, to move into areas like Europe that were getting colder and maybe able to uh, where do things like find uh, shelter or even some uh, clothing. We don't have any evidence for that. We also don't have any evidence for them being able to speak, but they must have cooperatively hunted uh, um, because we have evidence for big game, right? We have big game animals. Not one person could have eaten all of that, uh, so it must have been shared. So they must have cooperated in their survival strategies and shared food when they got that. Um, and so uh, this, um, we can start to speculate a little bit about their behavior as well. They probably couldn't talk like we could, but they must have had some kind of uh, communication system that allowed them to hunt and behave cooperatively. But we've seen that in other primate species as well. Um, so it doesn't look as though language has emerged yet, or at least there's no evidence for that. Um, but certainly at this point, culture uh, and biology are interacting in human evolution. So that's uh, bringing us into Homo erectus, and we'll come back next chapter and we'll start talking about humans. <laughs>